Hi, today we're going to be doing full power tests on our hybrid rocket engines. If you're interested in the details and what underlies how we got here this afternoon, take a look at some of the previous videos. We did three that go through the physics, the technology, the engineering, and the fabrication in a very clear fashion as to how we built the engines that we're gonna be testing today. And if you want to, after you see all the flame and fury, you can go back and take a look and see what we did to fabricate this type of engine. I think it's pretty good stuff. Now today I'm not going to go through the whole review because you can get all of that information from those previous videos, but a very short layout of what's going on here. Nitrous oxide cylinder, a 10 pound cylinder, an oxygen cylinder that provides oxygen for the ignition system, electrically actuated solenoids that allow us to operate this from a distance from the control station over there. We have an igniter that fires up the engine and we have a load cell that measures the power or the thrust that we're gonna be producing and can record it onto the computer over on the table over there. So I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna get going with the test itself. Okay, so we're ready to do the test. First thing I wanna mention is that we have a couple of spotters so that if anybody wanders into the general vicinity, I'll get a call and we'll abort the test. The second thing is, there is going to be very loud noises here. The first thing is going to happen when I turn on the ignition controller, we're going to get a beep from this tower. And again, some people are annoyed by the sound of that beeping, especially if you're wearing headphones. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a warning that when I turn this on a few seconds before I begin the 10 second countdown, be prepared for that noise. But it is important to indicate to the general area that we're going to be firing a rocket. So I am going to use that function. And when I hit the main nitrous solenoid, this one over here, the rocket will fire and that will be incredibly loud. So those are the warnings I'll give you ahead of time. So are you all ready, Al? Yeah. Okay. Is your software working? Should be. The, uh, you have the green start button? Yep. Yep, we're all good. Okay. So let's just check for one sec. Still good? All right. All right, here we go. Beeping. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
One of the things I'd like to bring up, though, about the safety of these hybrid engines, I brought this up in the earlier video about the fact that you obviously have the oxidizer and the fuel separated until the last instant. But there's another safety feature associated with these types of engines that are, is also shared by liquid-fueled engines. In a composite or a solid-fueled engine where the propellant mixes the oxidizer and the fuel together at the same time, what happens is that there is a positive feedback from the temperature and pressure inside of the combustion chamber to the rate of the combustion of the propellant. In other words, the hotter and higher the pressure, the faster it burns, which means the hotter and the higher the pressure, which increases the rate of burning, which increases the pressure. And you can get a runaway spiral, which can cause the motor to rupture. The nice thing about a hybrid engine is it is a negative feedback loop, sort of a bootstrap control, because as the pressure goes up inside of the combustion chamber, you decrease the delivery of the oxidizer because the oxygen, ox, nitrous oxide, is being supplied at a fixed pressure. As the pressure goes up here, the delivery of the oxidizer goes down. This is important because if you size your nozzle, say, too small in a composite solid rocket engine, the pressures can quickly run away from you. Or if you get a fracture in a fuel grain, which increases the surface area, or a small fracture of a piece of fuel grain that plugs one of the nozzles, or the uh, exhaust nozzle, the throat, that can very quickly lead to a runaway catastrophic failure of the engine. And it's another safety feature of these types of engines. I really like that. So we're gonna do another test, and we're gonna see what kind of performance we get out of this one. So let's just make sure Nothing. Nothing. We're all good. Okay. So remember the loud sounds. All right, I'm turning on the beep. Starting the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Looks like my connector on the top end was a little bit loose, but we still got a lot of nitrous in there and we got a little bit less power on that test. We'll run this one more time. All right, so this is test number three. Beeping. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one.
Not bad. Okay, so let's wire up the big one. Hey there. Hi. We heard this the first time up the hill. You did? We're making videos about testing hybrid rocket engines. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, and we've just tested the small ones. Wow. Now we're going to test the big one. All right, this is going to be the larger engine, and so it's going to be substantially louder. So just a little bit of a warning. Beep warning, and when I hit this valve, that's going to be the loud one. You all set? Yep. All set? OK. OK, here comes the beep. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It works. All right. So basically, a couple of the things to keep in mind. The safety features associated with a hybrid engine are significant. The fact that you don't have to use any kind of fuel pumps are significant. And the performance in terms of the specific impulse compared to solid rocket engines is significantly greater. So there are a lot of reasons to be looking more and more into these types of engines. Another thing just to let you know a little bit about uh, the way that these engines can be scaled is that as long as you follow the guidelines that we gave you in the first three videos about the physics and the engineering, there really is no limit in terms of how large you can scale these. The sky is the limit. You just follow the same basic parameters. Something else I would like to tell you about is we always request that if you find the kind of stuff that we're doing here interesting, please subscribe because it helps the channel to grow and it helps to finance the kind of work that we're doing here. In addition, YouTube put out sort of a troubling notice uh, to all creators a couple of weeks ago where they're going to be purging bot subscribers, potentially subscribers that aren't valid. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I think their algorithms are a little coarse. And we've had a lot of complaints from people who thought they were subscribed to our channel who were not getting notifications, checked and found out that they were unsubscribed. They didn't even know about it. So if you do subscribe, please, it does help us out. If you think you're subscribed, please just take a second to check because it does help. In addition to that, if you have a question about anything that we've done, put it in the comments below. Because I've said before, I read them all. And if there are any questions, I try to answer as many as possible. But the final thing is, stay safe. Have fun, enjoy science, and we'll see you soon. You have a good night. Okay, so what did you think? You. That was very interesting. Pretty yeah. impressive, huh? Yeah, well, it was a good, a good investigation. I came down to find out what was going on with the, with the noise. So. Interesting thing. Uh, maybe you noticed that when you saw the firing. I don't know if it was sort of overwhelming and you were sort of not looking at the details. But when you look at the rocket exhaust that comes out of the end of the tube, you notice it's not just glowing, but it seems to have little bands glowing in it. And those are actually shock waves. What oh, happens really? is, okay. as the gas comes out, it's coming out highly supersonic. Yeah. And as soon as it hits the regular atmospheric air, there's these interactions that cause it to compress at those zones, and when it compresses, it heats, and so it gets brighter. 
and then after that it kind of decompresses for a while, accelerates, and forms another shock wave. And shock waves are usually a good indicator that you have a really high performance engine because it means you've got supersonic flow and that's what's producing the kind of power. So kind of neat, isn't it? Yeah. So, so like I said, please subscribe. Well, we'll definitely check it out. Thank you very much for letting us. And if your neighbors are asking you what the sound is, say it's us, but say they're doing it pretty safe. So, and we're not cutting down any trees. Well, we can show. We can tell them where to look. Yep. Yeah, sure. Great sound. Yeah. Class for thanks for being so patient, waiting for all my you know doings. Okay, thanks. Oh, that was annoying. Not bad, huh? I forgot uh, on this ear. So I'm deaf in one ear. <laughs> yeah, I'll <laughs> keep What? <laughs>